I had somebody reach out to me about a scan they were having a hard time with. They've got this small plastic ear that they're scanning from different angles and having a hard time getting it to merge. So I decided I'd try to tackle it myself and see if I could help them out. With something like this right out the gate, what I'm seeing is while there are a lot of features to help alignment, they're not necessarily unique features, right? The software is going to have a hard time identifying one tooth from another. And when it goes to do an alignment, it's going to try and merge where features match with the greatest overlap. So if you have a couple different angles of something like this that you scan, and you go to try and align automatically, the overlap that is greatest is likely going to align with a lot of these teeth, but then you're going to end up with a big missing chunk. Alternatively, even if it's not a one-to-one -one overlap, you could end up where it's using either these teeth or these teeth to align. And what ends up happening is if these sets of teeth aren't a multiple of one another, they're not going to align one to one and you're going to end up with some weird clipping misalignment on those. So it, it can be tricky. So what I did was go and scan a gear myself. I found the closest one I had in my spare parts collection. Now I scanned it in full field because the person that reached out to me has got a Morocco and the Morocco is a structured light scanner and my Metro X is laser and structured light which it has labeled as full field. And I figured full field would give me a similar result to what they're getting with the Morocco. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. Here in RevoScan, I've gone ahead and scanned my gear. Mine is a little bit different. It's got a neck on it that isn't present on the other one, but it looks to be about the same size. It's a 33 millimeter diameter. Height is about 30 millimeters, so it's not really a big gear. It's got some pretty small teeth. So we're going to go ahead and just take this raw scan data, fuse, clean up, and try to mesh. I've got three scans. You can typically get by with two, but I like to do three, and I'll explain why after we got our fusions done. So something I've said before is anytime you go to fuse, Try to find a setting that works for all the models you're trying to merge and make sure you try to use as close as possible to them. So this one's happy with 25. This one got a lot going on in the background. It's probably going to recommend a bit higher, 28. And then this third one I did are going to be about the same. Yeah, well, 0.3. Now, part of what's given me that relatively uh, high point distance is I've got a lot of background noise I picked up, a lot of stuff that didn't scan well. So I'm going to go ahead and probably, since this one is so good at point 0.2, I'm going to try, or point 0.25, I'm going to try all these at point 0.2. I am going to do a marker remove. And afterwards, I'm probably going to do a fusion optimize just because this is a very, very, very geometric part. I'll probably benefit from that. Let's just go and do a quick fusion. Well, that's running. Let's see. Oh, I can't fuse two at once. I should have done multiple, but eh, we don't have to do batch processing. Yeah, that came out pretty good at point two. Let's do a fusion optimize. Yeah, that got, well, let's see. I'm not sure how I feel about the, that one compared to the first. It did help on the teeth of the gear. So I think I'll keep that. Probably should have fused a little bit higher than that, but hey. All right, and let's go ahead and fuse this one using the same settings. Nice. 
not too shabby. I didn't do the best job getting this top part, but that's all right. All right, that got a lot of that geometric detail back for me. Let's do the same for the final scan. This one might be a little boogery because it did want to do 0.3. I'm hoping I'm right. That doesn't need to be that fine or that coarse. I mean, none of the features are that fine, but actually, yeah, I think we're good on that. Let's go do an optimize. All right. Yeah, that one, I didn't do the best job capturing up here. I got a little bit of a gunk in the gears. Actually, I might have gunk on the actual gears. I didn't clean it before I scanned it, but I probably should have done that. Came out of a robot vacuum, which you can probably imagine how dirty that was. Let's go ahead and clean up our scan data. Let's switch this to orthogonal. Always do that when I'm cleaning prop scan data, just so I can get good planar views on all of my parts. Invert selection and delete. Now, something you can do when you have a part that's not pivoting quite where you want it to, you can alt click and change your pivot point. Now, because of the angle this one was scanned at, which was kind of resting at an angle like that, I didn't get a lot of the uh, bottom details on this, so I'm actually going to be cutting those out manually because they're not going to be strictly needed. Or what I have in mind for this particular part of the scan. A little boogered up in there and there. That's just from the scan angle. Let me just deal with this as is. It'll probably give me a little bit of noise on the merge, but mm, I didn't do a good job over here, did I? Something I can do. I can make out where it's supposed to be. It's just manually select some of this. And then when we do a merge with the other scan data, this isn't really going to impact us. This is going above and beyond. I could just remove all of these teeth, but I'm very much, yeah. I'm say I'm very much on the uh, side of let's have as much scan data as possible, but I'm. I'm also very much on the side of I'm kind of lazy, so. You tell I didn't really plan this one out that much. So one of those just put it on the platter, scan it, and start processing. I'm gonna do a quick isolation on that one. This one has got a lot going on in the background. I should have fused this a little coarser to be honest, but hey. We're going to work with what we got. I love this planar select tool. Just get everything below a certain point. Let's do an isolation pass now. Get this on a planar view. What I'm going to do is when you have areas like this where the scan data kind of drops off, it gets unreliable in terms of accuracy because it doesn't have other points to add to it for reference. So I just like to get rid of that right away. That's looking pretty good there. And finally, this angle here. Same process as before. Select our target. Invert select, delete. Let's go ahead and just do a quick plane select. Isolation. Now on this particular one, because of the angle it was at, didn't get a great scan under here. And I could rely, I could reliably merge it 
change my pivot point here. I could reliably merge it from the other one. Sometimes I would delete this section here and rely on the merge from another scan to fix that, but I might just keep it as is. Let's go with what we got. Let's just back to perspective view. This one here is really meant to be kind of a uh, an anchor reference. And I kind of wish I didn't clip this part out here. But it's going to help us out getting these other scans aligned if we need it. So let's go ahead and go into our merge function. And I'm just going to start by selecting the first two and doing an alignment preview. This might work. It might not. And I would say that reliably worked, surprisingly enough. Although, that being said, the... Well, no, because it actually used that. I was going to say the thickness may not be... Yeah, so we don't know how accurate it is in terms of actual dimensionality for this part here. Because it's relying on this scan data, which I already said isn't the best because of the angle I scanned the first gear at. So that may not be what we want to go off of. So what I'm going to do is start with this. This is going to be object or scan one in terms of merging. Because of the fact we've got these support arms for these pockets here, along with the teeth, and then bring in this, which has those same features, will actually help us out quite a bit when it comes to alignment. So if we do an alignment preview for those, you can see how well those are going to fit together, but because scan three was the first one I put, I pulled in, it's kind of acting as the master reference. And then if I pull in scan one, I can preview the alignment again. And now I don't have to worry about inaccuracies from scan one where I couldn't capture well because scan three, even though it's incomplete geometry, the geometry it does have gives me that strong reference. I really should have cleaned these teeth out here, but actually, you know what I can do? When you have this merge preview and you see areas like this are kind of ugly, I can actually use that. Or I hit that merge, I can go back into my cleanup process here. And since I know I've already got that geometry captured pretty well in another scan, delete that. I think it was right about here too. Zoom out. Yeah. So what I can just do, maybe just select all of that. And then, because I don't want to remove reliable alignment data, deselect. Might be overkill on that, but let's see how that does. We can come back into our merge. You can actually see it's already showing here where that's been cleaned up. I might give myself a few holes now, but, you know, I can work around that. A couple of spots that might need to be filled, but this would be something I could probably print from right away. Although I probably want to capture that a little bit more, or I could just take this mesh into my CAD software and reverse engineer from it pretty quickly. Let's just go ahead and generate from this and see how it comes out. There we go. We've got clean gear. Let's do an isolation on that. Like the whole lot overlap will probably pick up a decent amount that tends to happen quite a bit and then let's do a very weak smooth pass so when you're smoothing it's looking the strength is basically indicating how far from an individual point it's looking for reference points in the cloud to fuse from i don't know the exact distances to be honest but let's just say you know we're looking at one of these points here when we go to do a smooth pass we're doing it at a relatively low strength. It might only look at a few of its neighbors. Versus if you bring that up to a 10, it might be looking farther away and give you a stronger smooth. 
But when you've got merge scan data like this, we may have multiple points from multiple point clouds. Sometimes, not every time, but sometimes it can actually give you some details that you lost, but it can also bring in artifacts like that. So it's kind of a try it, see if it helps scenario. I'm not sure either way. I'm probably going to keep it default on that. If we're meshing, recommending 0.2, which honestly, the teeth on this are about a... I remember correctly, they're probably about half a millimeter, so I could probably even go larger than that, but I don't know if I want to go above 0.25. And the reason I'm thinking about like that is I'm thinking now in terms of reverse engineering this. So let's give that a shot. All right. Look at that. We've got some relatively clean geometry we can reverse engineer from now. Do a quick hole fill on that part right there. This could be curved. I'm going to ignore that in there. All right. So now we have got a relatively decent gear. I could probably print this and go straight to work with it and be happy with it now it's a small gear though and i would like to probably go into overkill i think i'm going to move on and yeah you know what? let's do it let's go ahead and reverse engineer this real fast so this got longer than i originally intended my original goal was to simply demonstrate how to merge scans and then i went off the rails and did a quick reverse engineering example too, where I took the scan data and I created a CAD model to make sure nobody has to sit through like 30 minutes of me rambling. I'm splitting this into two. So I hope you enjoyed this part. I hope you found it useful. Help you merge your scans. If I was able to help you out, let me know. Otherwise, the next video I upload is going to be me taking the same scan data and reverse engineering it into a CAD model. Stick around for that. I hope you have a great day. Get out there and scan something.